As much as I'm going to be talking today about tips for working from home, and today an increasing number of Americans uh, Americans are working from home. Uh, in certain cases, there are individuals like myself uh, who work from home uh, every day. Uh, in other cases, uh, individuals who uh, periodically uh, work from home uh, to balance a, a, a personal commitment uh, or just get a, a change of pace. Uh, but to be absolutely clear, uh, working from home uh, can be both a, a blessing uh, and a curse. And I've experienced that over the last two and a half years uh, as a consultant, uh, working from home probably 90% of the time. Uh, but the key thing is, in, the, in addition to these, uh, these challenges uh, that may come about, it's a great opportunity uh, to increase your productivity and get a, a great deal of a personal uh, flexibility. And so today I'm going to uh, share with you uh, some tips uh, that will allow you to have a more productive uh, and uh, effective work from home experience. And so the first step is that you have to have uh, the right equipment. And so working from home from the kitchen table uh, or from the couch uh, can be a very slippery slope uh, and likely uh, will not uh, end well. And so it's very important uh, that you have the right environment and the right tools. And, and those tools include, uh, first, uh, a walled office. Uh, definitely important uh, to avoid distractions, provide a, a quiet place uh, to work. Uh, it's also important to have a, a desk and a chair. Uh, I would encourage you to invest the extra money on the chair. I think you'll find it well worth it. Uh, at the end of the day. Um, a laptop computer uh, is also very important uh, and having a docking station that allows you to function uh, with that laptop as a desktop computer. And so you'll have your traditional keyboard, your mouse, and, and your monitor. Uh, it's all very important to maintain proper ergonomics uh, as well as to save your back and, and your eyes and, and your hands. And so that's, that's very important while at the same time maintaining the flexibility to be able to pick up your computer and go you need to uh, as well. Um, another important piece of equipment uh, is a digital device, uh, a device that allows you to print, copy, fax, and scan, and so it's very important uh, to allow you to maintain your full productivity at home without having to run to the office or, or FedEx or whatever uh, to complete uh, your business. Uh, it's also very important to have a dedicated business line, and so some individuals uh, will use their wireless uh, phone for this purpose. Uh, it's a little risky given that wireless phones are sometimes uh, not the best uh, for long drawn out uh, conference calls. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very important uh, for you to have a dedicated business line. Uh, and I learned this lesson the hard way. Uh, in one afternoon, I was on the phone uh, using the home phone for a business call. And my youngest son, Michael, picked up the phone. <laughs> and wow. he refused to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it was urgent uh, that he called his friend Ethan. Uh, to see if uh, he could come out and play. And so a very awkward moment uh, from a business perspective, but uh, definitely a uh, lesson learned. Uh, the next tip is that you, you have to establish the right mood. Uh, and I, when I say establish the right mood, I, I, I can see a lot of you envisioning me, you know, in a pair of silk pajamas, uh, some, some nice, very white music in, in the background. <laughs> but that's, that's not the setting mood that I'm talking about. The uh, setting mood that I'm talking about is, is really creating an environment uh, where you can mentally transition uh, from your personal life uh, to your work life. And, and so it, it's very important uh, to have that routine. And so there are a couple of things that you can do that will help you set the mood and, and drive that transition. Uh, first, it's having a, a regular start time uh, to your day, uh, just as if you were going uh, into the office. And so for me, roughly 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, I know that that starts my day, and my, my body knows that, okay, I'm up in my office and I'm starting my day. So having that regular start time is very important. Uh, designating a, a part of the, the house specific <coughs> for work uh, it is also uh, very key. Uh, again, definitely don't recommend the, the couch or, or the kitchen table. Uh, but again, it helps you to be able to differentiate your personal life at home from your, your work life. Uh, it's also very important to set clear parameters uh, with your family. Uh, and so although you are at home, uh, you are at work. Uh, and so even though you have the flexibility to, to interact with them, which is a, a great benefit, uh, I definitely enjoy seeing my boys off to school, uh, being able to greet them when they come home, uh, to get them down and make sure that they've started uh, their homework. Uh, and so all those things are, are great, uh, but it's important that they realize uh, that this is a part of your work day and they need to support you uh, in maintaining uh, that commitment. Um, 
also in setting the tone and setting the mood, it's important to, to set goals. <coughs> so, you know, when you start your day, have a very specific list of tasks uh, that you're looking to accomplish, uh, as well as set an end time uh, to, uh, to end your day uh, as well. And so those things are, are very important uh, in, in setting the right tone when it comes to, to working from home. Now, the, the last set of tips I have for you is really related to, to breaking up your day. Uh, working from home, you can be very productive, uh, but it can be a very lonely uh, existence uh, as well, and you can get into a point where you, you really can overwork yourself. And so it's important uh, to do some things to break up the day. My first suggestion here is to schedule your, your lunch hour. Uh, and so I would encourage you to block that time out uh, on your calendar, just like you would a regular meeting, and, and work very hard uh, to not schedule over that. Uh, it's also very important not to take business calls uh, during your lunch hour, uh, because it definitely can, can eat up that time you need to stay for what you want and really rejuvenate yourself. Uh, a couple of times a week, uh, it, it also works out very well uh, if you uh, schedule some time to run errands or, or take some time to, to take a walk. Uh, even if it's just for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, it's a nice way to, to break up the day. Um, also suggest that you use instant messaging uh, to interact uh, with colleagues. And I mentioned before that working from home can be a very lonely existence. And instant messaging is a great way uh, to connect with your colleagues, uh, see how their weekend uh, went, um, you know, see how things are going uh, in, in their world. Uh, and it's a great virtual water cooler. And so definitely encourage you to use instant messaging. Uh, my last point here is to schedule uh, lunch with colleagues, at least every other week. And can, it can be with a colleague or, or a friend, uh, but it, it's a great opportunity to, one, uh, engage the outside world, uh, and it also uh, provides you with something to look forward to, and knowing that, hey, on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm gonna connect with, uh, with this particular friend and, and catch up. Um, so hopefully you have found uh, my suggestions to be very helpful. Uh, I know that from a personal perspective, I've definitely enjoyed uh, my transition from a traditional work environment uh, to uh, working from home. Uh, it definitely has come with some challenges, uh, but at the same time, it's uh, been uh, more than worth it uh, for me and my family. So, thank you.